As you might be able to guess by now, I'm a big fan of tips for games. One of the first things I do whenever I pick up a new game is to look up lists of tips ranging from beginner to advanced and whatever in between. But the worst part is once you've seen one or two lists, they pretty much all start repeating the same information with maybe one or two different ones, if you're lucky. And I get it, some of the information is worth repeating because it's so important to know. Like for Genshin, most of the lists in the early days included things like don't spend your fragile resin until AR45, don't level a character to 90 because it's just not worth the resources. And that is important information, but that's not what this list is going to be. This is going to be obscure or just possibly lesser known things that I personally haven't seen on other lists. They might be, but I'm not about to look at everyone's lists out there to find out. These are just things that I found out either through random Reddit threads, just finding it out myself or just hearing it from somebody else. So here we go. If you are somebody who only sees the Serena Teapot as the world's slowest generator of resources and nothing else, then you may have not seen a purpose for the portable waypoints. But these waypoints let you skip the process of putting down your teapot, which is just stupid. I'm pretty sure we've all been annoyed by it not wanting to be put down on a sight slant, a stair, or just after your character does something like running. You can just open up your map, go to your teapot, and you're there done even though it wasn't exactly their intended purpose this was my favorite thing about those waypoints because i hate that stupid teapot and a little bonus tip related to that if you hate the way the waypoints look and you actually care about the way your teapot looks you can actually hide the waypoints on a raised platform with the clipping trick and turn it into something like a tree or the entrance of a house or whatever the hell you want to hide it in And if you are someone who cares about the teapot, when it comes to farming trees for wood, your first instinct was probably to grab a fast attacker like Zhongli and just whack the crap out of trees as fast as possible. But as you might have noticed, or maybe you didn't notice, there is an internal cooldown on when trees actually pop out wood, so a fast attacker will not actually do it any faster than like a Claymore character. That internal cooldown only applies to the same attack string. So you can use an animation canceling trick where you do your first attack and then walk cancel it to immediately do the first attack again and you can rapidly farm wood from trees this way now that is like slightly mechanically intensive for some players so if you want a bit more of an oonga boonga way a good character is noelle she's a claymore character her attack speed is almost perfectly in, in tuned with the internal cooldown so you can just pretty much swing away and you'll still farm relatively effectively instead of just sitting there and beating the crap out of a tree with someone like zhongli's attack speed and not to mention her wide swinging attacks means she's not likely to miss the tree unlike some characters who start with like a vertical swing so you may just narrowly miss the tree and she's available to everyone if you missed out on sayu and you long for that ability to not spook crystal flies with your clearly offensive presence you can still get crystal flies pretty easily by logging out in a crystal fly hotspot such as right here and when you log back in provided it's long enough for them to respawn, you'll almost have the same effect as if you had Sayu in your party, being able to start grabbing the flies as soon as you get a chance to, instead of having them scatter like crazy and having to chase them down over walls and maybe just miss them entirely. Now this one is important for you fellow Canadian players out there, and possibly for some other countries, but unfortunately I can only speak for a fact on this for Canada. When you make purchases for Genshin Impact, do not do it on mobile or the PlayStation Network. A recent change to digital goods taxing made it so purchases we make on digital goods platforms such as Steam, Netflix, Spotify, Google Play, App Store, and the PlayStation Network and various others are now taxable, which depending on your province, can be pretty brutal. However, Genshin's PC client is not affected by this for whatever reason. It may be a regional thing, since it's based in China. I know many people use the mobile version for payments for various reasons, some wanting to avoid paying directly with a credit card to MiHoYo, but you're able to pay with PayPal, so that's not really a concern. You'll save some money, which again, depending on your province, may be a decent chunk of change. For me, it's like 15%, and that, that really adds up, especially if you're a dolphin or a whale. 
obviously if you're someone who just buys the welkin moon every month then yeah you probably don't care it's like a dollar and if you're in another country other than Canada, you know, just try each platform out. Ask around because one might be cheaper and saving money is good. If you're getting screwed over by artifact RNG and let's be real, statistically, you are. You're finding yourself overflowing with artifact food and nowhere to put it and you don't really want to sell them for Mora. Try instead banking some as artifact EXP by leveling up garbage artifacts. Despite most of us needing Mora constantly, there may still be times where you want to bank EXP instead. This also has the added benefit of potentially getting a two times or five times multiplier twice. Once when you're first banking it and two when you're spending an artifact. Anyone who's ever thrown like a level like eight artifact in that didn't really pan out and gets like a five times multiplier you know that feels freaking good you save so much money so much artifact exp and yeah even though it's rare it happens it's happened to me many times so even if you do lose some efficiency when feeding leveled artifacts into another the chance of a multiplier in my opinion does make it worth it or at least worth considering, especially if you have a bunch of fragile resin saved for a future patch where you intend to farm a new domain just as much as you can on day one. If you're one of those players that's absolutely terrible at remembering to use your parametric transformer and based on the comments about everything to do with that thing or people just saying they forget it even exists there's a good chance you probably are one of those people and you don't want to set an alarm on your phone or your computer or whatever the hell else to remind you to use it because maybe you can't log in at a consistent time every week so an alarm wouldn't really make any sense you can either sync it up with the weekly reset where whenever you do bosses the, for the first time every week you remember hey how to use my transformer or you can set a portable waypoint somewhere where you're going to see it every day or use it every day like maybe part of your artifact farming route or right by whatever Catherine you turn in your dailies to it'll be a physical reminder of when to use your parametric transformer because you'll know the moment that you go to use it and it's not there that it's time to use your transformer there's not many ways that we can actually get resin based materials in this game so the parametric transformer is pretty valuable to use because it essentially is free resin even if just a little bit And speaking of the parametric transformer, did you know that the materials you feed into it can actually influence what reward you get from it? It's not guaranteed to sway the results, but it does influence it according to data mines from the wiki. If there are certain materials you're after, like talent books or weapon materials, or you just want more or EXP, this is a good thing to consider. Or maybe you just want to know what to avoid because there's something you absolutely do not want. The only downside to this is if you're someone who doesn't farm a lot of mobs, maybe Maybe you just kill the bare minimum and have basically nothing just like my alt account then this might not help you and you pretty much just use whatever you actually have in stock i think one thing we all know is that swimming in this game is a pain in the ass in terms of traveling speed and efficiency it's like comparing driving a car to skateboarding on gravel which still honestly might be a less painful experience than swimming it's so slow stamina is just horrible you feel like a chronic smoker but for those times when you are forced to swim long distances like maybe you want to go over to the GOQ boss uh, you can be much more efficient with your stamina by holding the sprint button and pressing forward repeatedly the logic here is basically the exact same as when you dash spam instead of full out sprinting that initial burst is much more stamina efficient than just holding the button down You know those quests and events that make you glide through rings in the air, but whenever the downward angled ones come up, you're just like, why the hell are these things so goddamn janky? And it just sucks. I recently found out due to laziness and being distracted that they actually work just fine if you let go of the forward key after the first ring. I can't believe it took me so long to figure this out because this is one thing that's always bothered me. I hate those stupid rings. It's funny, the things you can discover when you're busy scratching your nose instead of playing the game with two hands. And that's, that's what I got for now. Nine tip that I hope most of you didn't know or 
consider in some cases. Because then I did a good job of picking obscure ones, and that was the goal of the video. If you got any of your own that you never hear anyone talk about, share them in the comments. I love seeing people get on board with that, and if they're good, I might use them in a follow-up video to this one. I did keep a few of the tips I had written down just for that purpose, because if I want to make a sequel, I want to have some stuff ready. And if you liked these obscure tips that people don't really share often, check out my one tip for every character videos. I got two of them and I did them in the same spirit as this one, or at least I tried to. Obviously, some characters are a little bit harder than others to be creative with. But either way, thanks for checking this out. I hope you check out other stuff if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Bring it to the court.